What's up everybody, EJ here, and in this tutorial I'm actually remixing an old tutorial where I covered how to create bubble type or bubble text, only now I'm doing it years later and I suck slightly less at doing tutorials, so lucky you. In this updated tutorial I'm going to start out by showing you how to create round bubbly text using any font, then I'll dive into the different settings that create a balloon text look, including how to add wrinkles, and then finally I'm going to show you how you can inflate and deflate the text by utilizing fields and vertex maps. And if you want to follow along, you can support me by downloading the project files for this tutorial. You can find a link to those files in the description below. All right, so we're going to inflate some text make some sense to uh, create some text. So what I'm going to do is just start out by showing you how you can create some pretty nice bubbly looking text that we can go in and inflate and turn into a nice balloon. So I'm just going to grab a text object. Let's align that to the middle. Uh, let's just change this to type and uh, let's choose a different font. So I really like rounded fonts. Any font that's pretty thick and rounded is really nice. So I like rounded uh, M plus 2C black. And this font can be found on Creative Cloud. Actually, a lot of these fonts that are rounded, uh, you can find on Creative Cloud. So as long as you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you have a lot of rounded fonts at your disposal. Just make sure you restart Cinema 4D when you install and activate those Creative Cloud fonts, or really any font, uh, for those to take. So. Uh, you can see there's this Omni, so it looks really good and nice and round. But the key is to have a nice thick font, okay? So let's actually use Omnis, why not? And let's go, I'm going to show you a trick that will allow you to kind of roundify and bubblyify any kind of font. You can see these edges are pretty sharp right now. But what I like to do is I'll just run the object through a volume builder and a volume measure. So I'll place the builder in the measure, text in the builder, and looks great. Let's render this out, send it to the client. No, uh, we need to fix this. The voxel size is way too high. You can think of voxels as 3D pixels. We have way too uh, big of those voxels. So I'll just bring this down to one centimeter and we're kind of back to where we started from. But what we can do with this now is throw in an SDF smooth. So I'll just hit smooth and then we can really crank up this smooth here, but not too, too much. So increase the iterations there, maybe increase the depth of this font as well. And then we can go and one thing I like to do as well is click and hold and do this dilate any road. And what this allows you to do is you can almost see it kind of like inflates the object a little bit. You can choose this offset and kind of adjust things like that. But you can see that these two letters are almost kind of touching each other. And when you have two objects close to each other under a volume builder, they can kind of get merged together. So you got to watch that. If that ever happens, uh, what you can do is just go to your text object, go to kerning. Yes, we are going to kern like we are a designer and we'll just kind of kern these letters there. And that's looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, I think this is a really good starting place. Uh, let's maybe increase the voxel smoothing a little bit more. And you can also try which way works better. Definitely the dilate and road first and then the smooth. So this is looking good. If I hit N and then B to get garage in with lines, you can see this is a pretty dense mesh. We can always adjust this to like 1.5, hit N A, and that looks a little bit nice and rounder too. Uh, but what we can do is we can throw all of this into, not there, into a remesher. And if we throw the volume mesher in the remesher, what we can basically do is control the mesh density. So if I hit N and B again, you can see this is pretty, uh, this is pretty dense, like me. Uh, but we're going to bring the density down to say like 50%. And this will basically cut our polygon density in half. Let's actually bring that down to 40. Another thing we can do is since this font or any extruded object will be symmetrical in the Z axis here. I'm going to turn on symmetric Z. And so this will just give us a nice symmetrical mesh, which is uh, looking pretty nice at this point. And uh, let's actually, let's do 35. We'll just do that. Now you don't want too many polygons when we start throwing simulations at this. So the lower the poly count, the better, uh, but you definitely don't want it too super low so that you don't get nice wrinkly detail there. So let's say this is looking pretty good. I'm going to hit N and then A to get back to garage shading with outlines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this remesh. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to current state to object. And that's going to bake that object down into 
a piece of geometry. So I'm just going to turn off all these other objects here for now, and I'm just going to save them there just in case we need to adjust anything in the future. Now, all of these letters are in this single object. So what we can do is we can break these into individual pieces of text. So T Y P E as separate objects. And how we can do that is by selecting the object you want to break everything up in and hit shift and C. And you can see we have this new fancy commander in the uh, latest version of Cinema 4D, which is 2023.2. And what I'm going to look for is Polygon Island, which is a island I would love to visit to. Sounds very tropical. And I'm just going to go and double click that. And that will actually execute that command, Polygon Island to object. And basically what that just did was that broke up all of these separated objects and broke them out into... Uh, individual objects. So you can see I can rename these. So this is T. Highlight this object. You can see it's highlighting the Y. So that's Y. And then this is P. Oh, I can't reach on my keyboard. And then E. There we go. And so you can see that we don't actually need this remesh. It's empty. So we'll delete that. And you can see all of our axis centers are kind of off. They're all uh, in 0, 0, 0, 0 in uh, world space. So I'm going to select all these objects, go to tools, axis center, and I'm just going to hit execute. And that will align all of the axis centers to each of these individual objects like so. And so our axis centers are all good to go. And now we can start inflating this. Now, what I did for the final render is I kind of like adjusted some things, made some of the type a little bit bigger, just to make this a little bit more, whoa, a little, wow, a little more interesting. Got the Y doing little somersaults there. So maybe bring that back. Maybe shrink the P down a little bit and the E maybe rotate. So you can kind of, you, I mean, you can even do like the, you know, whatever type, type of thing that you want, whatever arrangement, uh, whatever type of design that you want, whatever type of type design you want here. The only thing to watch out for is just make sure none of your objects are intersecting. That is a big no-no, uh, because if you have geometry intersecting with uh, dynamics, things are just gonna get stuck together, and uh, that's usually not good. Okay, so we got our type here, and let's go and let's select all of our objects, and right-click, and go to Simulation Tags, balloon and because we're going to inflate these objects like a balloon and so immediately if i hit play everything's just going to fall okay uh, but what we can do is hit Control or command d to go to our project settings and go to the simulation tab and we can go to the scene tab and just turn off gravity for now so if you enter zero hit enter and now if i hit play everything's just going to kind of float around and you can see that actually I didn't even uh, I didn't heed my own advice and make sure that the objects weren't intersecting so you can see that there's that little ripple which was kind of cool uh, but that was just because the P was intersecting the E and there we go so we just have things floating right now if we go to the balloon tab here you can see that the overpressure is only set to one and this is basically how much pressure is inflating our geometry and let's actually bring this to about three and now we can start to see some really crazy stuff going on where everything's inflating and you know it's kind of cool but uh, we can do a lot cooler than this so what we can do at this point is we can have the inflation happen either longer over time whoops let's hit escape when that happens hit escape and go back so this is basically how long is it going to take for the balloon pressure to inflate the object fully to an overpressure of three. And currently that's 110 frames. We actually don't even have 110 frames in our project. So let's just increase our project length to 300. And so you can see that that's basically controlling how fast this is inflating. So if you bring this to 20 and let's hit escape and rewind, you can see this kind of inflates even more. If we go to like 10, you can see this is going to inflate fully over 10 frames. And why this is there is if this is like two, things start to explode and that doesn't look very good at all. So that's why that's there, in case you were wondering. So let's just enter 15 for now. And what we can also do is, you know, these objects are kind of floating all over the place and there's no real wrinkles here. So to add wrinkles, I have all of my uh, tags selected here. I'm going to go to surface 
and we can increase the bendiness to about 10. It's very aptly named. The higher this number, the more apt your object is gonna bend over itself and create wrinkles. And then the other important thing to do is increase this target length. So basically what this allows your vertices to do is expand beyond the initial length between each other. So if we bring this target length to 130, this will allow those vertices to expand beyond 130% of the original length that they were at the get-go. So if I hit play now, you can see all the little ripply things and some wrinkles happening. You can see there's a little bit of an intersection there, which uh, we can fix in a little bit, but everything's just kind of floating and uh, not looking all that great. So how we can actually help our objects kind of stay where the initial position is, like right here, is by going to mix animation. And with this, there's two different things here. This is kind of like uh, the old dynamic system. If I right click, go to bullet tags and go to rigid body. What this is, is basically the follow position, follow rotation. So if you remember, if you crank these values up, the dynamic objects are gonna want to maintain the initial position or rotation depending on which number you select here. So let's just remove that tag. And so this is very similar. So you can do this either having the object wanna stay in its initial position without using uh, simulation forces, or you can have it using simulation forces to help it stay in its initial state. So I'm gonna turn on with force, we can use dynamics. And the strength is basically how much it's going to try to maintain its original state, okay? So with that default strength of one, let's see what happens here. So you can see now this inflated, and this object, if I bring this down to point 0.1, you can see that it's kind of letting everything go go all loosey-goosey. But if we go 1, you can see that this is trying to keep the objects in the initial position and rotation. And you can see how this creates really nice wrinkles now. And that is basically all from that target length. So if I just had this kind of go like this, don't really have any wrinkles. So this is very important. So 130. Let that relax a little bit, and we got these nice little wrinkles. And you can see that we're getting a little bit of like intersection there. So what we can do to fix that, if you see any kind of weird stuff happening, how you can fix that is by hitting Control or Command D and going back into your simulation tab. And here under the simulation tab, tab, simulation tab, 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 uh, we have all these different sub steps and you can crank up these values to get a more accurate simulation. So if you have collisions and things sticking together, usually you wanna up the collision passes here. So I'll just enter four and four and let's see, cause the E was kind of, there's some little like snappy stuff happening here. What can help smooth out all those popping is the smoothing iteration. So bring that to two, uh, maybe a little damping will help too, and that basically just allows the springs that are in the simulation uh, particles to just kind of dampen and chill out a little bit faster. Uh, but this is looking fairly good. And we can even bring down the sub steps here to get a little more wrinkles. There we go. And that's looking pretty nice, okay? And we can even go to our surface uh, tab here and increase the bendiness even more, maybe some stretchiness, and you kind of get this uh, kind of effect. So right there is how you can create some really nice inflation and balloon text. Again, you can adjust how much that target length is. The more you have that, the, the more wrinkles you'll get, and with that longer target length, you can maybe play around with the overpressure and kind of see what kind of looks you, you can get. 3.5 and so you can see how you can art direct this and add however many amount of wrinkles that you would want you can actually animate these objects as well so you can have this pull <laughs> uh, fly into each other because this is that uh this is that whole mix animation here so you can actually animate all these different objects so you can even have like uh, if i select all these objects right click animation tags vibrate Basically, this is like your wiggle expression, and you can activate the rotation, the scale, and adjust the frequency, so maybe 0.5, whoops, not 0.4, let's bring that up, uh, 0.5 for this though, and even the scale if you wanted to, why not? 
And then to uh, let's just give different uh, seeds to all these. There's actually an easier way if you select all these and do num times a uh, bunch of numbers. <laughs> Hit enter, and that's basically going to take the number in the list, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and basically apply that number that I uh, had there. So num is basically uh, 0 for this first one, and then uh, where we basically go up and we multiply that random number by one, two, and three. And so you see we have all these different seeds. And now we can hit play. And you get this kind of thing going on where uh, everything's kind of rotating around and really nice and cool. And that's just like a, a really cool effect, have all these objects kind of bouncing into each other too. So really, really nice. Now, one other thing I, I want to show you, and let's actually... So we've moved all this stuff out of the way. Let's try to reposition them here. And that's all the wiggle stuff. Uh, what we can do is actually control the inflation using vertex maps, because that's one of the new features in Cinema 4D 2023.2 is the ability to control the inflation with a vertex map. But before I show you all of that, did you know that for only a like and a subscribe a day, you can help support my YouTube channel that's like a cup of coffee a day. Your likes and subscribes will go a long way in alerting you anytime I come out with new content. And if you put some kind words in the comments section today, you'll receive this free iDesign tote bag. Thanks for your support. Now back to the tutorial. So let's go ahead and let's select all these objects. Hit Shift C, bring up our fancy new commander again. We're gonna leave Polygon Island and enter. Uh, we're gonna search for Polygon Island using a vertex map. That was funny, huh? Uh, anyways, let's add vertex maps and we can go to select all of these, go to use fields. And this is going to allow us to use a field to control the vertex map strength. So I'm just gonna use a linear field and pull that out from underneath the T object there. And you can see we're controlling the vertex map with this uh, single linear field here okay and we need to do actually what we can do is delete all these and basically command click and drag and duplicate the same vertex map that is referencing the same linear field and if i select all these vertex maps and the linear field you can see that i can sweep this single linear field across all those objects and so now what we can do is use this vertex map to control what object, what part of our type is being inflated and which is staying stationary. So all I need to do is select all of these, uh, not the vibrate tags, all of the uh, cloth tags and go to the surface. And we can actually have this control that target length and use this uh, map there. So if you don't see this, just twirl that down and we'll just drag and drop the vertex map. And since all these vertex maps are named exactly the same, this will work on all of these. And then the balloon, same thing drag and drop a vertex map in there. And then mix animation, we'll drag a vertex map into here as well. So let's hit play. And you can see that everything's inflated. And if I pass this through, everything gets deflated. But you can see that it almost looks like the set animation or the, uh, or sorry, the mix animation is not working very well. And that's actually because for some reason, the vertex map for this needs to be inverted. And that's basically just because of the, the mapped values that the mix animation uses for the width force. So we can easily fix that by just command, clicking and dragging, duplicating the vertex map. Going to the base tab, and this is very important, if you have multiple vertex maps on a single object, you want to name it. So this will be invert, so we know what's what. And so there's vertex map and then vertex map invert, and then there's this handy invert right in the uh, vertex map. And so what I can do is command, click and drag, duplicate that vertex map that's inverted. And then basically the only thing I need to do at this point is instead of using the normal vertex map, we're gonna use the inverted vertex map for the width force. And so now if I hit play with the linear field outside here, you can see that everything gets inflated really nicely. And if I pass everything through here, you'll see that everything will kind of shrink down and kind of explode a little bit. 
But you want to make sure not to pass the linear field or any type of field through your objects too fast. So you can make that linear field a little bit bigger. Now if I pass this back through though, you can see what's going on. Now the one thing that's kind of causing this to inflate super fast is the, uh, if you go to remapping, this is linear. And what I like to do is instead of having linear, I'm going to have a nice little kind of arc here. So we slowly ramp up the strength. And to do that, we're just going to go to the contour here and go to quadratic and adjust this curve. And so now we can ease in. It's basically like an easy ease for this uh, influence. And so if you see this, this is basically, if I adjust the remapping, you can see what this is basically doing kind of adjusting how that vertex map is applied over the, uh, the span of this linear field. And so now let's rewind, let's click off of the vertex map so we don't see the vertex maps anymore. And so this is going around. We have uh, all the movement happening too with our uh, wiggle objects and we can pass this through. And you can see this is much smoother because of the now, again, I'm going to go slow, 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 slow. And again, like this is, you know, happening over 10 seconds here. So you can see as we slowly pass this through, it deflates. And that's looking pretty nice. And then we can go back. And actually, I'll rewind. And we'll do this the other way. We'll do the opposite way. The, the linear field will back through into here. So this is with nothing happening. And I can go back up through here and whoop. <laughs> Inflate everything like so. And so you can get this really nice inflation effect for free. It's bonus. And then come back through and deflate the object as well. By the way, if you're new to Cinema 4D or you want to get a little bit more in depth into learning Cinema 4D, check out my courses over at schoolofmotion.com. If you use promo code iDesign100, you can save $100 on either of my Cinema 4D courses. All right, let's get back into it. So, and this is without uh, gravity turned on. So we can always go back and add a floor, make this big enough, move this lower, and right click and make this a collider by going to simulation tags, collider. And do, 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 and then all we need to do is hit Command or Control D, go to Scene, and then just right click on these arrows and that will reset this to the default value that the gravity was at. And we'll hit play. And so everything just explodes and is floating around. And so actually what we need to do is we can pass this through and everything will deflate and then fall to the ground. Because we're removing all the influence of all of the balloon effects, the mix animation, and all that good stuff. And so that just collapses, bleh, just like so. And if we want to inflate all this from the floor, again, we just back up the linear field. And again, you would keyframe the linear field here. Here, I'm just kind of passing this through like so. You got the nice inflation going on there. Bleh. Bloop. And there we go. We got our text inflated and they kind of float up because they're trying to go back to the original position, which were, was when they were kind of floating in the air and they're moving around using the wiggle tags there or vibrate tags. I keep calling them wiggle. I uh, got after effects on the brain, but this is looking really cool. And one other thing you can do as well, add a little turbulent force here to make these kind of undulate even more. So you can see you have the vibrate tags and let's actually, let's turn off the vibrate tags. You can just see the turbulence object going. So you can see that it's up the strength here a little bit. So it's really pronounced. You can see that really nice undulation going on there. Yeah, that's really pronounced <laughs> cranking that up. Uh, adjust the frequency for how fast that's, uh, that noise is. It's basically turbulence is like a noise that's distorting your, Ooh, that looks kind of cool. That is like undulating the noise that's pushing and pulling and uh, driving the turbulence. So this is looking pretty awesome actually. And the greatest thing is, is that if you would do this with the old version of the dynamic system, stuff would be exploding all over the place and be pretty crazy. 
Uh, but uh, the new simulation system, pretty rock solid uh, as far as uh, I've experienced it. Um, but there's so many cool, you know, random abstract things you can do. So really quickly, I want to show you this uh, project file that you can download if you want to support me and check out what I did here. But this is using a different method. Instead of using the vibrate tag, I just threw everything in a fracture object, set that to straight, and then added a random effector. There's the random effect. You can see I just have some you know random values in here. And that will kind of move the text around and undulate them using this turbulence, uh, random turbulence here. And you can actually use some actual turbulence forces here as well. And so one quick thing I wanted to show is that this is just going to inflate. And then one really cool thing you can do is so you got everything kind of moving around and everything's respecting dynamics here. And the one big thing is I deleted all the individual balloon dynamic tags, cloth tags, and just placed it on the fracture object there. So very important if you want to do it this way, just throw the dynamic tag onto the fracture object and it will do, uh, it'll apply to all the objects underneath there. Uh, but one really cool thing I want to point out is if you want even more wrinkles, and I already talked about how if you want to add wrinkles, you up the bendiness, you up the target length here. But another thing you can do is if you want more wrinkles, go into this mix animation and nice little quick tip for you to end this tutorial, but you can just up this strength of the uh, with force and you got even more wrinkles because everything's trying to get back to its original position, original state. And because of that, every one of these vertices are trying to get back to uh, not being inflated, right? So it's creating even more wrinkles. So you can go and combine this with even more uh, target length and even more bendiness here. And this almost looks like this type was in the pool far too long and it looks kind of gross. So I'm going to let's pull back on all this wrinkles that you want. If you want very few wrinkles, put in a strength of one and it's kind of subtle Two, you can also put in decimals 2.5 uh, and just kind of, again, art direct, whatever type of uh, wrinkly balloons that you would like. And so I'm just going to go ahead and fire off a IPR render here. And uh, there you go. So we're slowly starting to see this new iteration of the new simulation system inside of Cinema 4D. And I'm super excited for all the new features that are adding. I'm finally able to update all of my older tutorials and transfer them over to the newest version. But there's still some major things like rigid body dynamics and little settings like set initial position and things like that that prevents me from updating all of my older tutorials. If you have an older tutorial of mine that you'd like to see me update, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the simulation tutorials or you want to see me do some other kind of tutorial, definitely let me know what tutorials you want to see in the future. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, go out and make something.